but they get confused because they only talk about methylene blue does this as opposed to a low dose and a high dose doing opposite effect, just like in the example I gave you about the rescuing from mid hemoglobinemia and inducing mid uh, met hemoglobinemia. So what are the low doses? Low doses we that we have tested. We haven't tested all the possible doses, but the ones that uh, work uh, better are always between one and four milligrams per kilograms. There are some uh, lower doses. We have only tested very little, but they also seem to work. In other words, it's uh, this uh, effect uh, that we refer to as uh, hormetic. It's like an inverted uh, U curve. So with the low doses, you're working on this uh, part of the curve. That is, as you increase the dose, you have these beneficial effects of methyl and blue. But then you can keep increasing, increasing the dose until you reach an optimal amount. And then if you keep increasing, it, it, go, it does the opposite. And with uh, methemoglobinemia in the blood, uh, you can do this uh, in, uh, readily, you can demonstrate this phenomenon. But uh, so we have been working only with this uh, linear increase here, but then it becomes this biphasic uh, response. So as long as you remain there and uh, anything that we have done lower than five milligrams per kilogram uh, seems to still be in that uh, beneficial increase. For example, in mitochondrial respiration, oxygen consumption, reduction of uh, antioxidant effects, reduction of oxidative stress. It is likely that any dose uh, that is uh, even is 10 times uh, less than one milligram per kilogram will still be in that part of the curve. In other words, you can go down without any risk, but uh, you cannot keep going up uh, because then you start, um, you're going back to baseline and then you're going opposite effects. Uh, and uh, this is something that needs to be understood. So low dose methyl and blue, and it has to be pharmaceutical grade. The term clinical grade doesn't have a, a really a meaning, uh, it's not meaningful. You have methyl and blue that is industrial grade, that is used for stain, like blue jeans, uh, clothes. Uh, at the beginning, all of the blue jeans uh, in the world were stained with, with methyl and blue. Uh, so who knows, we may be absorbing some methyl and blue uh, from early days uh, in very low amounts, uh, because as you know, blue jean loses these uh, stains uh, as you uh, watch it. Then uh, you have what are called chemical purity or chemical grade that is used in labs uh, or chemistry, but it has a very high impurity levels. In the most common products that are sold, I'm not gonna name the, the suppliers, about 15% of the chemical is not methyl and blue and is uh, chemicals that are actually products of the synthetic process that are toxic, that are chemicals that you don't want to take. So the so-called pharmaceutical methyl and blue reaches 99.99 .99 purity. Uh, and that's the one that you want to get. It is the one that it should be used in animals and humans. There are many studies in animals done with the chemical grade and those results are invalid because they are giving an animal 15% of, of toxic compounds along with the methyl and blue, uh, and sometimes chronically. And I have reviewed many of these papers, pointed this out, and these papers continue to be published. Uh, you cannot just buy, in every pet store, you have chemical grade methyl and blue. That, that is used to put into the water in fish. If they have any kind of uh, problems out, outside their body, like some parasites or things like that, they put uh, drops of methylene blue in the water 
and that's enough to kill the parasites and the animals are healthier, the fish are healthier. Well, you don't want to use that methylene blue. Only in the US, uh, the pharmaceutical grade is called USP, United States Pharmacopeia. There is a European pharmacopoeia as well. However, the requirements for the impurities in the European uh, standard are not as high standards as the one in the US pharmacopoeia. Oftentimes it's the opposite, but in the case of methylene blue, uh, you're gonna get a more pure, less contaminated compound when you use the USP than when you use the European. And that creates also some problems with the use of uh, European methylene blue for studies. That uh, they, uh, because the reason is historically in Europe, uh, they were using it like the original uh, to kill this uh, malaria parasites. So for example, to give you an example, for killing malaria parasites that is still being used, uh, especially in Africa, uh, and especially because of European uh, physicians that go there and treat uh, particularly children that who are uh, really affected uh, with malaria parasites, they keep them very uh, higher concentrations of methylene blue. Uh, but what happens, they give it them orally. So that uh, higher concentration of methylene blue, that is several times what, uh, what I'm referring to you between one and four, uh, it gets into the digestive system, into the intestines, and it helps kill the parasites uh, that they have, and very little is actually absorbed uh, through the circulation. The, the level that is absorbed is beneficial, and the majority that is uh, in the intestine is what actually helps to kill the malaria parasite. And the main reason for this is that the malaria parasite contains an enzyme that is not present in humans that is very susceptible to methylene blue, uh, to be inhibited by methylene blue. So you weaken the parasite. It doesn't really kill it. Your body is the one that eventually kills the parasite, but you weaken the parasite so your body can actually uh, kill it through your immune responses. And uh, so this is uh, how it was first used as a medication. And I can tell you, for example, that during World War II, uh, all of the uh, Navy command under Eisenhower, uh, all of these uh, sailors uh, were taking methylene blue every day. Uh, as an anti-malaria agent. And they would uh, have songs and things saying that they were so much sailors that they were even peeing blue, <laughs> uh, which is the major problem with methylene blue. Methylene blue, most of it just gets eliminated through the urine, your urinary tract. Uh, and that's why, but this is also very useful or dosing. So if you ask me what's the best dose for a person, I would say it is the best dose for that personalized individual. And you can tell that in a, to a large degree, excluding some of these uh, exceptional situations with some enzymes, rare uh, cases, that prevent the use of methylene blue and, all, and many other drugs. Uh, if, for example, you take the pill and you notice your urine starts discolorating, and I use the word discolorating because if your urine is very clear, it's gonna look more bluish. But if your urine, urine is not, you're not so well hydrated, your urine is normally more yellow, then it's gonna look more like greenish. You know, it's just a combination of the blue and the green uh, and and the uh, the blue and the yellow making green. So you take the methylene blue and you see how, how long are you uh, peeing with a discolored urine. 
And this, of course, as you grow older, your urinary system, your kidneys, do not uh, work as effectively at excreting compounds. So actually, older people have their methylene blue circulating longer. They actually can consume less, not more, of methylene blue like was done with the Alzheimer's studies that they were giving them very large amount. No, uh, because we, as we grow older, have less efficient in terms of urinary excretion. Uh, you just have to take it and see how long it takes. If you take it and it takes uh, five days when you don't, no longer see any visible sign, and it's okay, just the visibility is enough to see it, uh, then you know that you can take the next dose because you have excreted the, what you have. If, you, if your dose is so small that you don't see any change in your urine, especially if you are well hydrated and your urine is very clear, uh, you should be able to see uh, uh, if there is any of the methylene blue stain. When we start urinating, as soon as the methylene blue is going out and exposed to the air, it becomes oxidized into blue. When it's in the body, like in your uh, urinary bladder, it's primarily in the reduced form. And when it's in the mitochondria inside your tissues, it's in an equilibrium between reduced and oxidized form. So when you urinate is when the air oxidizes, turns blue, and it turns and stain, starts staining. Uh, so you can personalize this to you. How much do you need? Well, you need as much for you to be able to see some urine discoloration. And for how long? The duration of action, for how long has you see that discoloration? As soon as you start seeing or it's difficult to see, you can take the next dose. And, and somebody like me, that I'm gonna be in uh, less than two months, I'm gonna be 70 years old. I can only take it once a week is enough because uh, I will slowly dispose of it. And as long as I'm not excreting it, it's still circulating in my blood and having affinity for my brain mitochondria and I'm benefiting from it. So you don't have to take it every day. It, you have to personalize it to your own uh, system. And that's the best advice. So one size doesn't fit all. 